Hey, beautiful people. Old Man Ven, right before we get started, we tried to use new Skype. Skype pushed out a new version. It's in the show this week. Four pagers audio. It went about as well as one might expect. And on top of that, we had a bit of a power outage. So there's going to be a little bit of static in Pedro's voice organ. That's going to be a thing. Tried to minimize it as much as possible. Just a fair warning on that. It clears up later because we stopped the show and reverted. And a um, little bit of a power outage at the beginning. But hopefully we've stitched that in a way so it's not painfully obvious. Good times. Uh, if you want to see it live, of course, go back and just watch the full train wreck unfold in front of you. All right, let's go. We spin right round, baby, right round. Some developers screech about NVIDIA. Electron Skype is no longer a preview. And you can now play games in a box of mints. It's a great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, sitting back, taking that midweek break, covering some of the weird, fascinating, strange, mesmerizing, terrifying things that we found going on in the world of Linux. And we, we totes didn't just do this 10 minutes ago in the power blade. What do you want about, Ben? Nope. <laughs> Stop nope. breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> uh, it's too crazy. What's up, man? That's uh, one Pedro Mateus. I'm old man Ben. You, Hello. you know us. Um, it's almost like I know what you've been up to this week, but go ahead and tell yeah. me anyway. <laughs> but yes, it was a very, very busy week at work, and I totally did not just say this, but it's good to finally be busy at work, considering mm -hmm. how unemployed I've been all these years while doing this show and uh, like Gamecast Weekly. Yeah. yeah, It's good. <laughs> That's good. Not a whole lot to report here. Um, just, just being cold and getting warm. There's not much to that. When you drop a few stone, you forget because it's probably been like four or five years since I've lost any, like, before I got like wicked skinny again. And there's definitely the whole, oh, right, right, this thing layers. <laughs> yeah, temperature sensitivity, go figure. Right. And then that's definitely a thing. All right. Uh, coming up first this week is something that will cause no controversy whatsoever. Uh, none. None. <laughs> uh, Mint is going to curb check the KDE edition because KDE is horrible, right? Oh, yes. Well, as someone who's actively using KDE right now, yes, it is. But that's not what the, the point of uh, this little news story is. Uh, this is about Mint dropping their KDE spin because, and I'm guessing, not enough people were using it to justify having that dedicated ISO. Now, with that said, I do understand having an ISO preloaded with your favorite desktop environment. It's a value-added proposition, uh, so it is something that I could see the value in. But at the same point, if no one is downloading it, why? And I know there are some people using KDE on Mint. And to those people, I say, well, KDE Neon is also based on the LTS, and it two runs plasma and it runs a more up-to-date version that of plasma. That is a very interesting point that I totally didn't bring up in that conversation we totally didn't have 10 minutes ago. Yes. Um, yeah, if you're currently using the KD spin of men, you're like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but, I mean, would it be that much of a hassle just to go to the next version of Mint and um, install the KDE desktop? Yeah, no, it wouldn't. Uh, sure, it is. You have to download the entire kitchen sink because it's KDE. Everything is based off of the framework. But it, it it's a couple of hundred megs download. I don't... Oh, yeah. I really don't see the uh, the issue, but yeah, we kind of glossed over, uh, as I totally did not mention this, we glossed over uh, this last week when we covered the news story about Mint uh, supporting flat packs. But a lot of people seem to take issue with the fact that uh, they are, in fact, dropping an ISO that no one was really using. I don't know, man. I mean, some people just like to complain about stuff. Uh, I think it was Brian who wrote this article over at Beta News. He, he did. He's like, there's no official Ubuntu versions featuring both Mate and XFCE. So Mint should ditch those, too. 
And you said there are. Well, I'm just saying it's where you should, man. But I kind of mm-hmm. agree with Mint on the fact that they they have their own desktop, right? Cinnamon. Cinnamon, yeah. Cinnamon, and that's their thing. Focus on that and. But another part of me is like, well, where's the choice, Brad? You know, personally, I, I'm not, I'm somebody who just wants the core. I, I want that nugget. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to have three or four desktop environments or window managers. And, okay, I always know, keep open box. Something <laughs> like that laying around. I, I don't like prepackaged when it comes to my Linux. Uh, I completely agree with this statement and I completely disagree with that statement. I, I can absolutely see an argument on both sides really well but ubuntu mate has uh, a lot more fine detail work going into it uh hi martin <laughs> still loving that 1080 by the way uh <laughs> but yeah no there is a lot of uh, fine work that goes into ubuntu mate specifically and yes uh, the mate edition of mint also ends up benefiting from that but do they really change uh, enough to justify that? I guess that's the point that Brian was trying to make. I don't know. But honestly, just let go of the KDE version. That's fine. Use KDE Neon instead. Hmm. You, yeah. you, you, oh. Want to use it with your uh, NVIDIA card? <laughs> well, as long as you're using X, you can. Uh, if you're trying to, say, get a certain compositor running on Wayland... Well, uh, let's hope that compositor is not called Sway, because the developer, uh, Drew DeVault, uh, is saying, well, NVIDIA sucks, and he's sick of it. <laughs> That's his words. I, I don't uh, know. So, yeah. I, I personally wish he would just be a little more direct. I mean, I'm not sure I truly <laughs> yeah, understand. Yeah, what are you trying to say there, Drew? Right. Come on. I mean, he's kind of dancing around the issue. And <laughs> say then. what you really mean. <laughs> Oh, boy. But, Um, yeah, uh, if you read this, and chances are you probably did, because this was on all the news circles of all the Linuxy things. Uh, And, honestly, this is my opinion. uh, I don't think a little ranty hissy fit in text form is going to get the single biggest player in the GPU market right now to support your Wayland compositor. When... Let's face it, NVIDIA themselves are currently butting heads with the Wayland developers over how to do the window management in a composited environment. EGL streams versus uh, GBM? GDM? I don't know what they're calling it. Something like that. (laughs) Well, I mean, I'm kind of on board with the comment posted in our Linux um, from Lingux. Mm -hmm. who kind of points out he says you know while i agree that nvidia are not the most open company in fact one of the worst the following part of the blog post was just absurd and this is um where the fine young gentleman said well expletive deleted you too nvidia users are shitey consumers and i don't even want them in my user base and you, you just wow really I mean, wow. you're already in a niche market. You are developing a compositor for Wayland. Do you really want to scare away everyone? Really? I, I, I don't know, man. I, I just don't really need a petulant child. I'm judging <laughs> yeah. the entirety of my put... consumption habits based on a video card purchase. I'm like, I, I feel you on your point. Just a bit more tact. On oh, oh, what you're saying, because I agree <laughs> that's with us. you. That's us saying that you need a bit more tact. Mm. That's how far you've gone. <laughs> uh, it's kind of true, man. That's kind of true. Uh, best of luck with everything. You know, n- no one. I, I don't think anyone's going to come out and say Nvidia is a great steward of because they're not. No, no, they're not. <laughs> but. Um, don't they are it's... winning. That's the thing. They are currently the top dog when it comes to GPUs and uh, dedicated graphics cards. Well, they, so... they are clearly taking the approach of, like, w- w- with working on stuff like Wayland, which we're about to talk about, they're absolutely still taking the approach of, like, what you can do about it. They're, they're doing the power company approach. Where are you going to go? Yeah. And <laughs> the, the entirety of that time, we have seen, you know, the open source uh, Radian graphics stack getting better 
and better Mm -hmm. and better. So things could change, man, and that's good. But speaking, we've talked about Waylon. We've talked about KDE. So let's just tie this together and put a bow on it. That's, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you may know him. It's Martin Graceland. Uh He is the top dog at KWin. Uh, that's the KDE window manager. And well, he a year ago, you may remember that we actually covered his article saying that, look. We can, in theory, support EGL streams, but I don't want to do it. Uh, And he basically reiterates that a year later by saying, yes, we still can support EGL streams in order to do well in compositing on NVIDIA cards, but I don't want to do it, and neither should any of the KDE community. Uh, The patch, if it is to be coming uh, to add proper support for NVIDIA GPUs to KWIN should come directly from NVIDIA. And this, in stark contrast to the previous uh, bit, is uh, actually a much more grounded approach. It's like, okay, NVIDIA, you are the sole uh, pushers of EGL streams right now. You are the power company, yes. But you're the power company, so you have the power to contribute a patch. Throw us a patch and we'll include support for uh, EGL streams and therefore uh, NVIDIA compositing on Wayland. That sounds perfectly reasonable to me. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I fully understand why uh, he wants a workaround to come directly from NVIDIA and Mm -hmm. not somebody who greatest intentions, whatever, let's, but you know, that means that that one particular person is not Raptor bus proof. So if yeah. he is hit by a bus and eaten by raptors, oops, you know, but if you have all of the entirety of NVIDIA behind it and maintaining it more importantly, mm-hmm. that that's pretty good. And I'm going to be perfectly honest, I know people that work at NVIDIA. You all know that. Um, I don't see NVIDIA doing it, but again, stranger things have happened. And I do want to point out, yes, EGL streams, not proprietary NVIDIA thing, by the way. No, they they actually have a uh, repo that you can download all the EGL streams and the framework to make them work. Uh, It's all fully open source. You can use it, you can modify it, you can do whatever you want with it. But it's the way that NVIDIA themselves are implementing it, which, again, they're the only ones. So for all intents and purposes, it is still seen by the community as a proprietary implementation of EGL streams. It isn't. But that's how the community sees it. And, well, yeah, it wouldn't be the first time that NVIDIA has had to provide uh, patches to make their stuff work. Uh, I remember before they introduced the GL Vendor Neutral Dispatch, they had to provide patches for a great deal many games to work properly with OpenGL on Linux. But since they introduced the Vendor Neutral one, well, that's the OpenGL implementation. They are fully compliant with the OpenGL spec. So they don't have to worry about it. And they, I guess, NVIDIA at this point is trying to standardize EGL streams. And they are the power company. So they can try, I guess. It could definitely be a thing. So I think ultimately at the end of the day with this one, you're, um, yeah, TLDR is nothing's changed. Because the support yeah. was there to begin with. It's not going to be there in the future. But I do believe really do believe that um, the real test is when or if someone does create a workaround for this in a patch Mm -hmm. and to see if you'll be able to sit there and go, we're not taking that, we're not accepting that with the masses going, but it's right there. Get rid of your principles. Accept it. Yeah, the few insane people who actually build it and get it running on their system, it works great. Come on, just support it. Come on. (laughs) So, man, uh, this is kind of a sad day because this is something I've, not going to say used on a regular basis, but this is something I've been very glad was there in the past. And it's something that's been around for 12 years. And... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a firebug, and Mozilla just kind of like squish, man. You're not a thing anymore. <laughs> it will be dropped with next month's release of Quantum, Firefox Quantum. Interesting bit of kit. It is wicked fast. I've played with the um, early builds of it, which you can get yourself. And 
it's basically going to go the Chrome way where it's going mm-hmm. to be built in. It's built in. Yeah, you're going to be able to sort it. Yeah, yeah version 57. And the tool, I guess, is just what? Uh, you're not going to be able to install it or... Uh, I'm sure there will be an option in about config if you want to get rid of it because you suspect that it's doing something to your browsing experience. Mm -hmm. But then again, that's just the Mozilla way of doing things. Put everything in a browser and let people disable it as they want. They did that with Pocket when everyone was screaming at them, why are you including proprietary code? And then they bought Pocket and open sourced it. Everyone was in, oh, uh, it's still wrong. Uh, (laughs) Again, some people just like complaining about things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, it's uh, bringing the it's a, a unified experience. Yeah, exactly. You don't have anything tagged on. Yeah. And admittedly, that's something Chrome did right. Right from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need an extension that I have to worry about uh, updating or anything along those lines. And you don't realize you need that functionality till you need that functionality. Mm-hmm. Because I had to wrangle out a, a key, an authorization key to get a, what was it? A, the Lib Purple plugin for um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hangouts. Uh, the Hangouts. That was a bit of a nightmare. And, and I was <laughs> glad I had that ability. So we're trying something because we like to dog food things. Oh, and yeah. We tested production. <laughs> we absolutely we are well known for that and um yeah the the fugly skype is out it is publicly launched if you go to download the linux version you will be using the version that pedro is currently connected to right now so if you hear any audio rumblings blame skype they're they're intermittent and they are there i mean they this is what it looks like fortunately there's a dark theme so it will not completely burn your retinas out uh Another thing, old Skype, people, it still works. They, they said they were going to kill mm-hmm. it in July. Still works. <laughs> and it Three months wo- later. <laughs> three months later, man. Uh, if you look at it, I mean, to me, it's like they really, really want to turn Skype into like the Slack, Discord type social app. But uh, that ship has sailed, son. It's way too late, Microsoft. You're not going to be able to buy your way back into this market. All you're doing at this point is kind of uh, irritating the people who still remain to use Skype for its intended purpose, which is Mm -hmm. audio video chat. And you've been cocking that up for like the past two or three years. (laughs) Repeatedly. And we've seen that. Uh, admittedly, the Linux native version of Skype hasn't been updated since the 4.3 days, but we've seen that. We saw the progression of Microsoft progressively making Skype worse and worse. Uh, our videos stopped being able to go into full 69, and, well, as you've been seeing over the past few weeks, months even, uh, I've been in that teeny tiny 4x3 window because old Skype is still pretty good with the uh, bandwidth management. And yeah, it would allow me to do video uh, while minimizing the audio gremlins. Apparently, the new version doesn't do that so well, but hey. Uh, We had to try it. And uh, one thing I like about old Skype is it was not developed by Microsoft. Nope. (laughs) Nope. Yeah, I kind of feel like Robin Hood because we're just utilizing their network and resources. Mm. (laughs) Yep, uh, you can't give us ads. There's none of that whiz bang it's the old ancient client so but they're monitoring everything so does your isp so so is google if you're using chrome or an android device or really anything it does work <laughs> it's electron wrap nope it's currently available mm-hmm. as a deb or an rpm yep i personally don't trust to install Skype on my system so i just extracted the deb file unzipped it and it's probably what you did as well, right? Yep. It's it's easy enough. It's just uh, find a dot folder and just pull out the USR, the USR folder and drop it somewhere and just go to the bin and fire up Skype. Done. Um, launched out of the box. Uh, one thing we did learn is make sure you have your audio and video set to default, even though it gives you it's smart oh, yeah. enough. I, I have a bazil- Don't pick specific ones. It doesn't work with Pulse Audio at all. It needs to use the default, which defaults to the old Ulta plugin, which I'm guessing is where the audio gremlins are coming from. 
that, that and I don't think it's, it doesn't seem to be doing a good job of handing off on when it's uh, shifting bandwidth. That's normally that, what I'm seeing when your bandwidth's taking. It's not doing a good job switching the bit rate on the audio codec, and I think that's where we're getting yeah. most of that. And it's mostly when you move around a lot. Okay. Either that or I'm trolling you. I want to see how still you can see. <laughs> I'm not moving now. <laughs> All right, your audio just got kind of funky just then. Um, Lightvox. Yeah, we do have this light works and it's a new beta 14.1 revision 101109. And apparently it's now available for Windows and Linux. You know them, you love them. It's that high end version of video editing software that was used in movies like a decade ago and I, you never really heard of since. Big change log on this. They've added a bunch of things. Unfortunately, I didn't get to try it out because they wanted me to register an account to download a beta of something that's only really useful if I end up buying the pro version. It does have some new things in it. Um, they added support to adjust red R3D raw metadata parameters. That's kind of cool. 16-bit GPU precision. And we do have support. For QuickTime with Alpha Channels, and that might not mean a lot to you. Doesn't re mean a whole lot to me, to be perfectly honest. Because Pedro, this is, I'm not saying it's a bad editor, but it is above my pay grade. It <laughs> has abilities and functionality that we're not going to use on our silly little show. Uh, yes, and there was also that uh, really annoying thing. Well, annoying for me. Uh... I don't know if this is a feature that people ask for that they want, which is whenever you um, you start it, it creates its own workspace and it locks you to one of your monitors and doesn't let the mouse escape. It's like a full screen game. Mm -hmm. Is that something that people want? Uh, I don't know. It, to me, it just feels weird. I don't know. I mean, I, I know when it first launched, when we were, we became like the unofficial hype machine for it because I, I was. It's going to be open source. Ah! Open source or just on Linux. I mean, especially it was like, we're going to put this on Linux and eventually we're going to open source it. They never got around to that. And I'm not angry that they never got around to it. Now, again, um, they've been sold. So mm -hmm. there's that. I can't really blame the current people in charge, but what I've, always had an issue is they never addressed it. They, they, they pulled a Carmageddon going, oh, oh, we never said that. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, let's just not address those people. They will go away in time. That, That's been working well, hasn't it, Stainless? Well, <laughs> for the most part, it is, because if you go to their forums and you see if anybody brings that up, the like, threads locked. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> then just, just be like, hey, yeah, it's not going to happen anymore. Get over it. Yeah. And people will. I don't understand. Um, I would rather use DaVinci and buy a black magic card and support them. <laughs> oh, we will have some feedback about that. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> right. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We, we, we will have a little bit of the feedback in that section. Um, okay. What is up next? Uh, somebody tried to send us a signal. Oh, yes. Uh, all the signals, decentralized signals as they were. Yeah, you may have heard about it. It is the um, open communication uh, collaboration platform signal, which uh, lets you edit documents, uh, send IMs, do video, do audio, whatever you want to do. Basically, if you want to do something with someone else, you can. And it's, uh, well, it's actually really easy to set up you just download it it's an electron thing because that is their version of the dedicated um desktop client is an andrew uh, an electron app so yeah i guess that's something to look forward to i may or may not be biased against electron apps but yeah it's it works i tried it it works i'm gonna be honest with you i didn't try it because it's an electron app not because it's an electron app it's just that if you can't run an electron app you got other issues going on with your system mm -hmm. um oh, okay so it's decentralized how does that work out yeah it's uh using those uh mesh networks that have multiple nodes and it uh, supposedly introduces better security be and removes the single point of failure, you know, the raptor-proof thing all mm -hmm. over again. 
Uh, so if one of the servers gets taken down for some reason, it can still work just on another node. And that makes sense. Uh, so it's uh, uh, there was even a recommendation from Edward Snowden. Basically, Edward Snowden likes uh, everything that these guys do because they are heavily focused on security and encryption and keeping as much stuff away from prying eyes as possible. Of course, there will still be some prying eyes because someone is going to make an account and pry directly if they have to. Well, it's not even that. I mean, there's always the argument to be made is this is just painting a target on yourself. That too. <laughs> Try and start a Tor uh, browser in the US. See like how that, long right? it takes to, for the FBI to knock There's your door. There's going to be some alphabet agency. It's like, let's go check this guy out. Mm. All right. Oh, you know what Tor is? <laughs> Come over here. That's great. I like what you get to watch, buddy. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, if tell, when is it? What was it called? Telegraph? Telegram? Signal. Signal. I don't know. Yeah, There's too many of them the other one. <laughs> There's too many of them, and they all look alike. This is the other yeah. problem. I I used to like, oh, it looks like you've copied him, and there's always like, no, they copied this. Then somebody was like, well, that copied that. Okay, fine. The innovation is dead. Just face it. <laughs> Crazy good times. All right, before we get out of here, we do want to give this a mention. Uh, I think what well, was it? Trugs. Yes. Yeah, Trugs gave us a, a suggestion in the show notes for this. And, well, we are talking about the open source app repo, Afdroid. If you don't know about it for your Android devices, go install it because mm -hmm. you can find a lot of really cool open source projects in here. Um, for a long time, this is where you would go to get the up to date version of VLC. But what we're oh, talking yeah. about now is it doesn't look like something that was designed by a developer. And yeah, yeah, uh, no, it's uh, lost the old uh, '90s style UI, according to Truggy, because uh, all you need nowadays to shed that old uh, previous decade, century, millennium, what have yous, is put some pretty pictures and uh, some pretty colors. And you got yourself a fancy new UI. But hey, hey this it is actually... good, man. Uh, it highlights the uh, donations to app developers, which is yes. very cool. Very cool. And uh, uh, the screenshots for the apps proper are also very appreciated, which was something that was glaringly missing from the old one. I didn't mind the old uh, UI all that much. It was just that it would be nice to have a screenshot of what the app does and what you're going to be looking at, just to have an idea of what you're installing, because it gave you nothing. It was just an install button, and that's it. Hmm. <laughs> Pretty interesting. I didn't get a chance to install it and play around with it. Um, admittedly, the one thing I do install, I use it for, is uh, Attaway. Mm -hmm. I use that. But there's other things on the Play Store. A Attaway host deny list, man. Oh, yeah. just It literally edits your host file and denies all of the ad servers. Mm. Keep that up to date. It'll save you a lot of battery. It'll save you battery, bandwidth, battery. chugginess, and, you know, Nobody get on to me because I pay for all my apps. I don't really. Yeah. Let's see. What apps do you have? I, I guess Plex. I know about Plex. Yes. I bought Plex too. I also bought the WT Forecast uh, widget because that's really funny. Admittedly, <laughs> I think I bought. No, I did buy that. The um, It, it was like one click FTP demon. Yes. yes, I, yes. I, just, I just couldn't be arsed. <laughs> Like oh, I also uh, I bought uh, Smart Launcher, uh, which is a very bare bones, very lightweight launcher, which also saves you quite a little bit of battery when compared to the default Google one. Hmm. <laughs> Good times. Um, damn it. Don't like, listen, I understand blocking ads, man, but support developers. And I'm not just saying that because we're mm -hmm. about to beg for money. No. Uh, <laughs> Dance monkeys dance. Hey, if you like this wacky nonsense that we do every Wednesday, uh, consider throwing us a bone. A couple of shackles. You can do that over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We've got a bunch of beautiful, beautiful, fiscally irresponsible people helping us make not one, not two, not three, but four streams every week. Two of those are actual podcasts. Amazon affiliate links. We got those. Thank you, everybody who's shopping through that. Yeah. That has added up greatly. We have a new egg affiliate link if you want to shop through that. We got a wish list, make our dreams come true. And we could be like camp girls or camp boys and be like, oh, thank you. And all that. Cause I'm um, Pedro. We will even show you some cleavage. 
Pedro, Admittedly, it's bad in cleavage, but hey. <laughs> Pedro, I'm about to do that. I'm about to do that right now. Oh, are you going to do it? I'm going to be a camboy because I'm um, <laughs> mere citizen. Audio so noodle! <laughs> audio fresh audio noodles because we're getting ready to hook up a new mixer so we can start <laughs> doing some live calls and uh, effectively up to eight people on one show. So that will be a audio oh, we- n- nightmare and it will actually kill me. It, that, that. Also, something else that may or may not kill you. Strider sent you a thing. You see, I respect <laughs> this because I didn't really want it. it, it this, this, this was the one thing on the wish list that was not for the studio. It was at the <laughs> bottom, like tagged, <laughs> saying, not for the studio. Strider's like, hmm, I'm going to get them like this. Uh, I've been playing <laughs> with Strider. it. It's been pretty cool. Um and everybody, Oaks, who has chipped in, you end up on the fine, upstanding cannibal wall. Unfortunately, Frank takes care of that business. He's only around on Saturdays, Wednesdays. He's got choir practice. You know that. But you're permanently and prominently displayed in the studio and will always be in any incarnations of that. Um, we got some PayPal buttons. Ba-da-da. Yes. Um, that's the thing. And Bitcoin. I think that's Magical it. Magical internet money. You guys are awesome. Thanks for, like... I don't know. I, I enjoy doing this little segment because we get to thank people, and that's better than yeah. telling you to go buy some stuff from somebody else. It's pretty <laughs> cool. Um, and we get to thank all all of our lovely, lovely Patreons. Thank you all very much. It's your continued donations who keep making this show possible and keep making those uh, weekly streams possible. And, hey, <laughs> we actually do like doing this, so you actually inadvertently helped us do something that we actually like you demons you mm-hmm. oh uh ven before i forget you did say that you wanted to do some uh cleaning up oh man oh i, I was getting ready to tear this forget, delicious yes. slice of pie we're about to talk to um <laughs> if you're on discord through patreon like set set that up like click that little yes. clicky button because we're trying to keep track of who's who and on what roles and it's going to be like 30 days. But after like the 30 days, I'm, I'm going to send out and add everyone like once a week for the next four weeks. So if you don't care, you're like, what else, what else? Uh, but if you do want to make sure everything's still working and up and cricket, uh, yeah, make, make sure you link that stupid little thing. Cause that would be neat and it would save me a ton of time trying to organize and manage people. Mm-hmm. But if you end up having any problems also call me girlfriend and we'll get it sorted out now. Yeah. Just let us know now. Can we have the pie? All the pie. Wow. That's a very complicated pie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. That reminds me of a Verizon check. I once saw. <laughs> okay. Starting out this week, banana pie M2, not M.2, but this is a zero, which Means it's teeny tiny, itsy bitsy, and um, you know, like the Pi Zero, uh, 512 megs RAM, micro SD card, mini HDMI, built in, 802 BGN Wi Fi, and Bluetooth, two micro USB ports, a 40 pin expansion header. What, what's this thing running? A7R Mali 400. What would you expect to pay for this? $200? No. $300? <laughs> oh, that'd be crazy. I'm just trying to buy some nope. time because it's. It, Fifteen dollar plus shipping. Fifteen bucks. <laughs> All right. So that's yeah. what? A couple of bucks more than the Pi it's Zero. It's five bucks more than the Pi Zero if you could ever find it uh you know in stock. Well that could be <laughs> kind of the difference with this. Well Yes, uh, because this is a banana pie. It's not exactly a raspberry pie, but it is also slightly more powerful than the um, Raspberry Pi Zero, because the Raspberry Pi Zero it is like the old A model. Mm-hmm. Uh, just in a slightly tinier package, but this is the Banana Pie, which means you get a quad-core all-winner Cortex A7 processor to drive all your things. So you will be able to run more games, I guess. <laughs> well, that you can make some really cool stuff. That is probably the most adult thing I do is not buy a lot of these. I mean, I have a Pi <laughs> 1 and I have a Pi 3. I got a pie nut, uh, some, I know I got one somewhere because someone gave one to me 
at the log. I'm like, here you go. I was like, I need to go put this somewhere because I'll sit around when I have like 30 minutes. I can make something. This is definitely a little more powerful. So I, I just don't know what I'd make with it. And I also, do you ever have this issue? Is I kind of feel like they're, they're taken away from the guys who create, you know, especially when you start making effectively clones in the same form factor. <laughs> Uh, well, you could see it like that, or, you know, silver lining, it's competition. It uh, uh, forces the Raspberry Pi Foundation to stay on their toes, because there are a bunch of other people out there, mostly uh, Chinese companies, looking to capitalize on any and all um, gaps in the market. So, yeah, it's... I see it as competition. Good competition. Um, I like competition, but I always get a little sketchy when they start cloning the exact form factor. Because it's uh, it makes sense, especially when it comes to like oh, it makes sports. sense if you're piggybacking off someone else investing the R and D money to create a product. It makes perfect sense. Yes, and it also makes perfect sense if you want to capitalize on the community that has spun up around that other device. And yeah, you don't really want to swim up against the current you want to kind of go with the flow so yeah you, it makes sense that you would have the same form factor because look everything that works for one now works for the other and you don't have to create your own community you don't have to curate your own community of everything and yeah they make sense but yeah it's a form factor clone absolutely <laughs> right. um, something a bit more interesting. Altoid rather than it's like, oh, we've done this, but not like this. They have. Speaking of the Pi Zero. <laughs> yeah, this is a very good use for it. And uh, this is very, very well done. Now, this is nothing like the um, Nightmare Train, the original prototype of this. You'd have to. Mm -hmm. d d does it, yeah, he does show it off in the video here. It. Uh, Let's say the finished version with the plates and everything. He he says his original version was something that if you looked at too hard, it would break. <laughs> Which looking, at, I mean, look at that mess of wires. Yeah, uh, that's IRL spaghetti code, ladies and gentlemen, and solder points and just total nightmare fuel. That that version right there on our TSA confiscation. Mm -hmm. You're going to Guantanamo scale. That would have rated like <laughs> seven out of ten. This new version. <laughs> that's conservative. This new version, I think, would probably only signal maybe a 3 out of 10 on our TSA scale. You a 3 with those exposed wires going to the screen. You turn those wires into a neat-looking ribbon. Here's the thing, Pedro. If you're playing Donkey Kong on it, you like, hey, man, I made this. You see, it's a little portable thing, and dude's going to be like, oh, that's cool. Let me check that out. And yeah. So, but yeah, no, just hide the uh, hide the wires going to the screen and the speaker. Uh, make a, a little nice-looking ribbon. Just so it fits. And there, there you have like a one on the TSA scale. <laughs> uh, they could definitely get it down. I mean, when, when you're looking at something like that, though, you're thinking, wow, you spent some money to look like a hipster. But nay. <laughs> now, all the, all it's those, better to skirt off like that. All this business is going to be at our show notes. Uh, the developer of Minty Pie says he is currently working on releasing schematics. Mm -hmm. So you can do this and... You could easily stick that together probably for like, what, 50 quid? Yeah. And uh, hey, you'll get some free Altoids out of that. <laughs> ugh. I don't have anything against Altoids. I don't... The satisfaction cost analysis doesn't break down. It's... Yeah, it's that uh, sugary candy that you put it in your mouth and it dissipates in like two seconds, but Tic Tacs are still popular. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Uh, like big happy Tic Tacs. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for our show. Uh, Pedro, if they would like to get in contact with us, because they've listened to us talk for so long, maybe they want to talk mm -hmm. back, give us some ideas, suggestions, thoughts, hints, tips. Tell us what we got wrong, maybe something we got right, or maybe just a story about their adventures in Linux land. How would they go about that? Oh, yes. You can do all of that and more by going to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button. It's really easy. Make sure to pick LWDW from the little drop downy menu. Uh, you can also send Jordan some uh, questions for relationship advice, or if you're a developer, you can send us some games. Just make sure to read the uh, free things. But here, all you need to do is pick LWDW, fill out the form, do some maths at the end, which 
I mean, it's purple. The answer is purple. Always purple. Uh, <laughs> it's not, so just do maths. And leave us your message, whatever you want to say. If you'd like to suggest a story, you can do that too. Just let us know. And some people this week, let us know. Because the very first one comes from Tim the Enchanter. Uh, and you may remember that last week we were talking about that DIY laptop that looks like one of those old chunky 90s laptops. Oh, you mean the one that has scored a 11 out of 10 on our TSA scale? Yes, the one that is just going to get confiscated, basically. Uh, so he says, last Wednesday I decided to have some relaxing LWDW. Oh, poor you. While reinstalling my silly old netbook. Uh, yeah, I guess I can see that. Uh, I decided to go with Anti-X17, which released recently. It's a distro geared towards old hardware. Yeah, I remember using that on my Triple E. Uh, so there I was, mid-installation, marveling at IWM glory, and then you guys started showing the uh, MNT Reform DIY portable computer in all its gray 90s goodness. Gave me quite a good time and a blast from the past. Cheers, Tim the Enchanter. Yeah, no, it's, 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 that will get confiscated at the airport. That's inevitable. <laughs> no, man, I like old netbooks. I, I went digging around. I couldn't find my old luggable. Um, I should have brought it down here. It, I didn't put it on my whiteboard, so I didn't completely screw up. I just legitimately senior moment forgot to do it. I found a, the best I could do was a 233 megahertz Pentium. But the fascinating and amazing part it was like this thick. I mean, this this was was the equivalent of like a razor ultra thin back in like impossibly thin back in the day. Yeah, no, on that uh, little coffee table back there, there's my netbook, and there's the um, the IBM T forty two ThinkPad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, plenty of chunkiness to go around. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um. Let me see. One Last more. one. It's the one. It's the one. So I made a little how-to guide. Uh, quick and dirty how-tos for me. You know them. You tolerate them. <laughs> Botch writes in. This one was about DaVinci Resolve because people wanted to get that up and running. And I think kind of smartly, uh, the team at Black Magic's like, we're going to make this thing based on Scent. You know, CentOS mm -hmm. or Rel. And it like, makes perfect sense. And no pun mm -hmm. intended. He writes, hey, man, I was wondering if you had any further help or direction on a video you posted on YouTube. Okay, we, we're off to a good start, Pedro. We're off to a good start. There's plenty of videos, but sure. <laughs> I made a replay. As, well, he, the title's Resolve. He, he explained what he was talking about. I'm giving this. This is from mm -hmm. the contact forum, man. I mean, yeah. Th there's been a lot of asking back and forth for help, and I did have to give it a thumbs down. Because what I see is a lack of help. Hmm. All right. All okay. Right. All right. The link has been shared on numerous forums concerning this, but get the final message along with other viewers of this video of BMD panel, no process found. You sure would make myself and a lot of other people happy if that may be able Ow, holy hell. <laughs> if that if that may be able to be addressed, and I would and if, this is what made me grin. Um and I would remove the thumbs down and put a thumbs up. Thank you for your time. Botch. Um Pedro. <laughs> I mean, kudos. You really think that thumbs down is hurting us? In fact, if the news about the new YouTube algorithm are to be believed, that thumbs down is probably helping us more than your thumbs up. So, hey, kudos. Thumbs up to you. Uh, that said, um, the BMD panel, isn't that one of the black magic uh, processes? It, it's probably a capitalization issue. Yeah, um, that too. <laughs> Here's the thing, Brad. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to be the shepherd right now. <laughs> okay, we're at the end of Pulp Fiction. I'm Samuel L. Jackson. I'm trying to be the <laughs> If this was any other Saturday night, I've already ripped you a new one. So. <laughs> um, I checked the 
Control F, L- looking for that error. Both, both, all, all two of the 50 comments on that video, the two asking this question, neither were running Humbuntu 1604. LTS. Which was the one you Which is in the title in the video. of the video, <laughs> cleverly disguised under the name of how to install DaVinci Resolve on Ubuntu 1604 LTS. Now, now you might be thinking, no, stop me if I'm right. Um, car analogy time. Hashtag slash dot. Here we go. I, I don't watch an installation video of how to install a water pump on a Mazda Miata, then go attempt to do the same procedure on my Volkswagen Jetta, then go back to the Miata video and be like, what the heck, man? I, I mean, th- this <laughs> I'm gonna doesn't I'm going to give you a work. thumbs down. I got to give you a <laughs> thumbs down. They're clearly <laughs> both cars, so it should work exactly the same on both. <laughs> Now, I did try to Google for that specific error. You know what I found? Nothing. There were no results. So, you sure you wrote that correctly? Uh, I, man, listen, I don't know. I, I just don't like... You, I'm not give, I'm giving you free life advice. The, the thumbs up, thumbs down, I know maybe that makes makes you feel like you have some weird power or something but when, when you walk into somebody's house and you're like let me tell you what i'm going to do for you once you do this thing for me if that's how you start the conversation like oh yeah you're just going to get kicked out the door it's like get right <laughs> and uh on that yeah i i think it's a uh, time to bid everyone what is it adieu 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 <laughs> how do you say goodbye in um uh, um british Bye. <laughs> you should, he's, he's an imposter. He should have said cheers. <laughs> That's thanks. Whatever. <laughs> Here's some credits. <laughs> <laughs> I may only be living here for like four months coming in, uh, but yeah, no, it's, 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 uh, that's thanks. <laughs> oh, all the beautiful producers. Look at him. That's you. That's all y'all. That's exi- this is the reason this show exists. 100%. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for it. Even you, Brad. Even you. Oh, and Pedro hasn't watched the second series of... Which I haven't no, watched. No, 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 I haven't. I, it's my shortcoming. Uh... <laughs> I haven't watched the first one, so he's saying it to me like, Can you believe i have still have I think, dude i ain't watched the first one yet dude. <laughs> no it doesn't cause me any thought whatsoever that you haven't